Here's how to create an ePortfolio from scratch. First, click SCU Login. Then click SCU ePortfolio. Once you've done that, click Login and you use your Santa Clara username and password for your Gmail. Let's create a new ePortfolio. First, you would click Create. Then you would enter a title. And here you can select to create an ePortfolio from scratch as well. And you can change some settings here that you can change at any time. So don't worry about getting it right the first time. And then you can always change these, the comments and the tags. But for now, while we're editing, we'll make it like this. Let's go into custom permissions. Here it says show ePortfolio in directory. That means that at any time, your ePortfolio can be shown in the public directory and people can look it up. Now, if you want to add your professor or somebody else into your ePortfolio, then you would click additional permissions and you would just type in their email address there. And then they're able to see it. Now, let's create a uh, page within our ePortfolio. So here you have sections and pages. Pages are nested within sections. So here's how to add a section. Just click Add Section, and then you would give it a section name, and then click Save, and then there it appears. Here you could add another section. It could be photos, say a photo gallery. Now here you have different templates that you can create. One of them is a gallery, one of them is rich text, and so on. But you can get a lot done with just rich text. And you can even move around the order of your sections as well, or even delete a section by doing this. So now, let's actually go in and edit a page and change and here you can change the order as you can tell and also with pages before we get into that you can also do the same thing with a page within a section you still have the same uh, galleries contact forms image video and audio templates and you name a page just the exact same way that you would name a section. So let's actually put some content in this rich text page. So we're going to click on that. And then we're going to click add this module. And now we have a blank rich content editor. So let's get into some useful tools by adding a table. It's actually a great way to organize your content. Like let's say we're adding in journals for a portfolio. Then we could just add in a table and put in pictures beside it as well as the documents uh, that are in this uh, folder right here. I have all my documents for um, this reflection, this reflection journal. So um, I'm uploading my reflections in here and it comes into an underlined form where you can click on the file and view them that way. Or you could also do media from web and you can um, add different kind of media that way such as you know YouTube links or other uh, media. So you can insert all these things in here. You could actually put an image in this way and you can center it and you can get it looking nice to have that above all my reflections and you can just repeat that so once you're done, just be sure and click Save, and publish this page, and publish all changes. Now, when we click Research Papers again, we can see that the page has been saved. And that's how you edit a page, and you would edit a section the same way. 
let's go ahead and add a uh, image video audio editor. Here's what it looks like. You would click replace this media and then you would choose from all these different types of files. Or you could go to media from web and get a YouTube link. So here's how you would do it. You would go to YouTube, you would click share, and then you would click embed and you would get the actual embed code and you would copy that and then you would go back to media from web and you would just paste it in there and then insert it. Then you can play your video directly from your page without having to go to YouTube. Now when you finish, make sure to click publish this page and publish all changes. Now let's go to photos within sections and make this a photo gallery and click save. Well I click gallery and add this module. Then I can add media with just the exact same tool. And it uploads just the same way. And then here you can add a caption to this. And it's done. Now once you're finished with everything, just click publish this page and publish all changes. Let's go ahead and make our portfolio look nice and change the background and the header. So first you would click settings and then customize within choose a theme. So let's go ahead and upload a header image which is 70, 779 pixels wide or less. So in order to do that I'm going to show you a trick on how to get the best size image for your, for your header. So to avoid copyright issues, we're going to click advanced search and for size, we're going to do 1024 by 768 in order to get the correct size. And we're also going to do free to use or share commercially. Now we want to get this certain size because this is very similar to editing your Facebook timeline. Um, except with Facebook, you can drag and drop your time, your, your photo to fit the timeline. But here, in Digication, you have to get it exactly how you want it. So um, here we're going to actually use a tool called Command Shift 4 for Max, where you can get just the pixels that you want. So here for my um, English journal for um, reflections, I'm going to actually get this headline or this header of this roller coaster here where that ties in thematically to my journals. So once I capture that, it goes to my desktop. So now I go back here and I just select upload new image, choose file, and then I go to my desktop and select the image that I just captured. Now you can also change the background color just by checking the box or inserting a background image, but you have to make sure that you get the proper dimensions in order for it to display best. So you want to go for something that's 1600 by 1200. So make sure you click visit the page and save image as. And then I'm going to save it on my desktop again. And then it uploads just the same way. Once you have your image uploaded, you can even select how it's aligned. Um, and then here you have your other settings that, like I said, that you could change at any time. So there you go. The image is lined up nicely there. It's tied into my thematic journals for English class, and I even have a photo gallery that ties into my reflection journals. So now we can change these settings again. So once again, it's custom permissions. Now I'm going to make it public to make uh, you know to make it public for everyone to see. But also I check the box show ePortfolio and directory so that other people can view my ePortfolio and also add my instructor. But be sure and click save. And this is how you create an ePortfolio from scratch. Thanks for listening.